Okay, my name is Bill Whale, and I'm here today to talk to you about the um, foam board flying wing that I put together. You saw it fly in the previous video. This right here is the 2200 uh, kilovolt uh, uh, motor by Turnigy. It's a 2826, and it has a 5 inch prop. I have all the details which will be in the video on the parts list. As you can see, I have it all wired. Uh, ESC to the motor. I have a 40 amp ESC in this particular configuration. I'm going to show two configurations. So this is the one configuration. This is the performance one. If you're an intermediate to expert flyer then you can just start with this one because um, the reason why I say you have to be intermediate to expert is you got to throw this thing and fly it at a certain speed it's not going to fly at a slow speed like real slow because with the uh, bigger ESC and motor it's going to weigh a bit more plus we're putting a bigger battery in it we are putting a, um, a 1.8 battery into this three cell into this one now the other configuration that I'm talking about here's the other configuration and here, this is a smaller one. Now I put the ESC on the bottom, but actually now I've been putting them on the top. So I'll show you the build. Same build, both models. The only difference is here we're using a Turnigy uh, 1400, um, 1450 kilovolt with its a 2822 motor. So it's a smaller motor, lighter motor, and using a bigger prop. It's a 6x4 prop. So you can see it barely clears the... Um, the two flaps here and you might even have to trim them a bit make sure you trim them equally if you trim them and up here the big difference between the two configurations is I'm using a smaller battery it's a, 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 one, a 100 milliamp, well, I mean 1000 milliamp um, base 3 cell battery and it's much smaller much lighter this configuration is I would say not a little less than, I mean a little bit more than half the weight of this configuration, but it's, you're almost getting to like knocking 40% of the weight off and therefore it floats. This one floats real gentle and this particular configuration I recommend for beginners or even if you just want to start off with one that's easy, learn how to fly the wings and then later on go to the uh, go to the, the 70, 80 mile per hour one. This one is fun because it will fly slow and then this one here with the bigger motor it's fun because it just um, you know 70 mile per hour, 80 miles per hour fly by it's, it's really fast and powerful. Now this one also has excellent vertical performance just like you saw with the fast one because although it's going slower this one um, is so much lighter that it can do really good vertical performance. Um, so overall, they're really both excellent flyers. And I'm going to show you the build. The build that I do is the exact same thing for both models, except for one difference that I can think of. Well, first of all, you're putting on a different ESCM motor, but the install is exactly the same. And then the big thing that I would say is the difference is with this one, this configuration which is the 1.8 cell battery it's a bigger battery when you slide it in you can't have your um, you can't have your receiver here see what I center the receiver in this one so the receiver actually mounts right in here with the slower model but with the faster model I have to mount the ESC to the side if you take a look here I'm mounting this in the side and I slide it in and then the motor slides in the front like so and when I slide it all the way in I, it's going to go all the way back to about here so the, e, the the receiver can't be here it has to be here okay to give you an example so that's the big difference between the two builds other than that the planes are identical other than um, the size of the motor the size of the ESC and how the battery goes in they both slide in the front but this one's longer, so that means that you have to put your radio to the side. Whereas this one's shorter, and the radio can fit centered right here. So that's, that's the only difference. Now, let's go on to the build. Here, I'm showing you the layout of the wing itself. As you can see, I have it printed out on one 
two, three pieces of paper. I have the layout. It's going to be on my website under whalesnail.com, W-H-A-L-E-S-N-A-I-L.com. And I'll show you in the video how to get onto the site and to get the three images that, um, that, that will help you lay this plane out. It's very simple. This plane, as you can see, once you put the three, uh, three pieces of paper down, what you want to do is butt them up against each other nicely. And then you have this line right here. And this line goes across the three pages. And what you want the line to do is match up with all three pages. Then you know you got the layout just right. Here, these holes you cut out also, those are servo holes. That's where your servos are going to go in the wind. To give you an example so you can see what I'm talking about, this is the plane. And you can see it fits um, perfectly over the layout that I had put down there. And you see the two servos here. There's your holes right there for your servos. So that shows you exactly how you're going to do it. You're going to make, this is not making the plane itself. Right now what we're doing is we're making the template. So we're going to use a piece of foam board. And this foam board is um, Adam's foam board. And you can get this foam board uh, for a dollar at Dollar Trees. Anywhere you can see a Dollar Tree. It's a 20 inch by 30 inch Adam's foam board. And uh, they're readily available at uh, Dollar Tree stores for a dollar. So basically, what you're going to do is make one of these templates, and then this template you're going to trace out onto another piece of foam board, and you're going to make your win. So what I do, I lay the pages down, and then once I laid the three pages down the way they're supposed to be, I tape them down, and then I uh, so that the pages don't move while I'm cutting, and then I carefully cut out the uh, template. And you've got to be accurate here because this is what you're going to be making your planes from. So if this isn't accurate, then your planes won't be accurate either. So you see how basically all I did was just cut the foam board just the way you say. I'm going down here. This is really important to get this edge just right because you're going to have two fins. So these fins and I'm going to have another uh, drawing for the fins to show exactly how to cut those out. They go right there. So you want to make sure that uh, this edge is accurate. As you can see, I'm trimming all those all the way around. And I'm making sure that I'm trimming it right on the line so that way this template is very accurate. Now you're going to see here they don't quite match up. That's okay. I figured I could use a fourth piece of paper but I didn't want to put you through all that extra work. All you do is you trim beyond here and then what you're going to do with this next one is you're going to trim this direction and the two lines will meet up the fact that you cut over there it doesn't matter. This we're not using this section, so that's fine. And then there you go. Then you trim this. Then you trim between the two, like so. Then we go the other way. So here and cut in here. And now. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut beyond. See, this other line's coming down. You want them to connect. So I'm going to cut beyond. So I'm sure I've got enough of a cut. Then I line these up, and that's my final cut. And that. Now that is the, the wing template. Then what I'm going to do, I can put these spare pieces aside for a second here. <sighs> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim out where the servo holes are on here. That way. Now you might have a servo that's bigger than these holes. Okay. This is set up for <clears throat> if somebody wanted to use micro servos, then the hole won't be too big. If you find 
that what you're going to do is you're going to lay this over the plane you make. Cut, trace out these holes. If you need a bigger hole, you just put your servo on top and I'll show you how to do it. This is just showing the general placement of where the servo is supposed to be. And I make them small so that way if you have a small servo, it, the hole won't, that I'm giving you won't be bigger than that. I imagine though that the servo that you're going to be using will be slightly bigger than this hole and that's not a problem. Now at this point you can go and take off all of the paper. You don't need that paper anymore because what you've got now is you've got a template and this is what you're going to be doing all of your tracing from in the future. And what I would do is I would put on there template so that way you know you you'll whoever's with you will know not to mess with it okay hopefully thing that I didn't show you guys so far is how to get the um, images off of my website so what you're basically doing is you're hitting on Internet Explorer Explorer I go typically to Google then you type in whale snail or whale snails and puppy dog tails that's my daycare center so whales snails and puppy dog tails oops and puppy dog tails child care center or you can type in whale w-h-a-l-e snail dot com w-h-a-l-e-s-n-a-i-l dot com you can see right there whale snail dot com so you type that in and then you get to my website and that's my daycare center if you go to photo gallery that's your second choice in and uh, now you see pictures of my daycare but down below I threw in here the three pictures you need this is actually three pictures right here left and there's three pages you're gonna tape together that's what we talked about so I said um, YouTube uh, uh, for those who you know for those who are looking at my build video on YouTube for the 80 mile per hour phone wing this is the three pages so basically all you're gonna do is go to the bottom of that photo gallery and you're gonna hit your right mouse button you're gonna right click on the picture so you're gonna have your arrow over top of the picture then you're gonna right click you're gonna hit your right mouse button and then you're going to see a box pop up and then in that box you're going to choose save picture as you hit that then with your left mouse button and then you'll get um, you know folders coming up and if you want to you could create a folder you know to say um, you know uh, where you want to put your picture this picture is called new 70 you just save it as that so like let's say if I were gonna put it into a folder here I have 423 2014 I'll stick it in there and hit save and then it's in that folder then I'm gonna right click again on the center picture save picture as same folder this one's called new 69 you hit save then I'm gonna right click on the right picture and save picture as and this one's called new 71 and you're gonna hit save now just to show you um, that it did save those under 423 I'll hit details up here you're gonna see the pictures sorry it's taking a little bit here coming up it's just taking a bit because I unfortunately chose a folder with a lot of videos in it though some of them I just took to do this video compilation but there they are new 70 71 and new 69 so if I double click on that now you can see there's the one picture there's the other picture and that's the center picture and basically what you're gonna want to do is print those out full page size and then you can um, tape them together just the way I did so to review again you're gonna go on to go to um, whalesnails.com so you can do whales uh, whale snails and puppy dog tail or you can type in and here I'll type in whale w-h-a-l-e-s 
N A I L dot com. And it should come up that way also. And you see it actually it's showing you here Fishing Creek, Child Care, Whales, Nails, and Puppy Dog Tales. Hit that, and that's my page right there. You go again to Photo Gallery, and then you see a whole bunch of pictures of my daycare. Then you just scroll all the way down to the bottom, and lo and behold, right there at the bottom, underneath pictures of my daycare and my boys, you'll see the three pictures you need. Don't just click on one. You got to right click on all three. Those three are three different pictures, and you got to save all three of them to your computer, and then print them out full page size, and then you'll be good to go. Um, if you do have any questions, this is my reason why I chose my website too is under contact us. You can always contact us and ask me a question. That's not a problem. Okay? And I hope it works out good for you. Uh, there's one step that I forgot to do. Now what I'm taking is a spare piece of foam board. See how I had that set up there? This is the spare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, put that over here. And I'm going to lie that down. I'm going to take just, it doesn't really matter which ruler you use, the width of the ruler. And then what I'm going to do is run that down the whole thing. Then what I'm going to do is just divide it in half. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm measuring this. I got 52 centimeters. So basically it's 26 is the divider point. I just want them to be equal. And bam. So what I've done here is I want this to be this leading edge to be a little bit more rigid. And basically what I'm gonna do is set it back like uh, you know five centimeters is what I'm gonna I mean five millimeters, not five centimeters, five millimeters from the leading edge. So what I'm gonna do is I sort of eyeball it to be honest. I measure the one side and I make sure it's equal the whole way across just by eyeballing it. Get about five centimeters there. I mean five millimeters there and then boom, we're set. Then what I'm gonna do is put on some hot glue here. And I'm going to glue this to it like so. Then I'm gonna do the same. over here and the reason why I'm doing this is you'll see a little bit later once we trace this out then we're gonna put the temp and we get everything all done we're gonna tip the template on top we're gonna bend the foam back over top I want this to be a little bit more rigid then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing all over again with uh, my piece here where I'm going to cut this out again. And now I got two more, I got one more strip which I'm going to divide in half. So what I'm just going to do is measure uh, the distance between the two. I got 55, so let's see. Okay. So basically, Put that in there, and then what I'm going to do is put some more glue on top of this, and some more glue on top of this side. Then I'm going to recess this back again. This time I'm going to recess it back a one centimeter, ten millimeters back on both sides, you know, so that way this is recessed here just five millimeters, then over here I'm recessing this ten millimeters. And there, you'll see the reason why is when you bend the wing over this is going to form how the wing, the airfoil of the wing is what it's going to form. So the wing's gonna be higher up here. It's gonna bend over and then come back lower here. So what we're doing is we're making the airfoil of the wing. Now you can see I've got a little bit of a gap here. 
So what I can do is I can take a couple of spare pieces of foam and I can just glue in some. Just so that way this doesn't uh, bend back on itself. To make it supportive. Okay, if that makes sense. Make sure when you're doing this that you don't cover over your servo holes because you're going to need to have to to um, to lay those out on the model that you're building. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue there, put that there, and put a little glue here, and put that one, and so. So now what I've got, I've got a template. This not only gives me the layout of the plane, it also gives me how the wing's going to go over the top. Then what I would do here for the middle is I would do um, just two pieces and you can just use two spare pieces of foam. It's not critical here. This is where the battery is going to be. So to be honest we cut this away anyways. But to make it um, to make it that it's uniform, I would build up the center here also. So that way, what I'm saying is when you bend it over, you're going to want that it's about the same height the whole way across. And boom. And boom. Then what I do is I look at how these two are going to be joining, and I want that to be in line. Now you got your template exactly made. Now we're ready to make the plane itself. You will never have to make the template again by the way because once it's made you're going to be using this to make all your future planes. You don't need that anymore. I mean you don't need to make another one. One will make all of your planes. Oh, I almost forgot one last step to the template. Okay, in there you're going to also see one of these. You have a template for the fin. You only need to make one. There's going to be two fins on each plane, but remember, you only need one template. This will make both sides. The one you'll have mounted this way, the other one you'll have mounted that way. They'll be identical fins. So what you're going to do is you lay this piece of paper over top of your cutting area. You just tape it down. And then what you do is you cut out your template. And try and be a very accurate on your cutting out for your templates. And the reason why is this is what you're going to be making all of your planes from. So if your template is not accurate, all of your planes will not be accurate. So you want to make sure that you cut out right on the lines that you're, you're making a template from. So. And there you go. Now, you just trim it up. So it's exact. And you can see here, that's the piece of paper and that's my template. So this is be the winglets. So to explain what that is, this is the template for the plane. This is the template for your wing tips. And here you definitely want to write template on this because this one will look exactly like the ones that you're copying. And we all know if you make a copy from a copy from a copy, it's going to get worse and worse. So the best thing is stick with one original. And now you got the templates. So you got the wing tips, you got the plane itself. Now we're going to show how to build the plane. Piece of Adams Dollar Tree foam board. So this is what you'll see. It'll say Adams Dollar Tree foam board on it. And you get them at Dollar Tree and they're literally a dollar. It's 20 by 30 inch foam board. What you're going to do is we lay this down and then we take the template and we put it on top of the foam board. Actually I have that. 
corner there a little bent, so I'm going to do it this way. You want you want it to be centered. So this template has to be centered, left to right and right to left. You also put the wing tips that they're right on the edge of the foam board. Now I measure off. That's two and three quarters there, and this is three and a quarter. So that's not centered. So I'm going to slide it over just a little bit. And then I get another idea. Here I'm at not quite three and a quarter, and here I'm not even at three inches, so I did it too far. Let's see. Three and, and an eighth. No, nope, still not correct. I was under three. So here's three inches, and there's three inches. Now, some foam boards, it might not be three inches and three inches. They could be a little slightly longer or slightly shorter. So this one happens to be centered at three inches and three inches. The important thing is not how much you have over here and here, it's that you have it centered. So that way the material that you're folding over will be equal on both sides and the wing will be equal. Now, once you do that, then you take your marker or a pen and you go along all the edges and you trace out all the edges of your template. There you go. So now I have my way. Oh, and I forgot to do this also. So actually, we don't put the holes for the, uh, now I think about it, because we're folding it over. So this is actually going to be the bottom. So you won't even see that once or twice. So I have the wings set on the foam board, traced. Then what I do is I put my ruler along the leading edge of the wing. This is, this would be the leading edge of your wing, say. And because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut through the material fully here and here, because this we're gonna bend it over. What I'm doing is I'm gonna remove a small strip of paper along the leading edge. So what I'm gonna do is I, I my technique is I hold my fingers and I slide my hand along the ruler. So I don't put the blade fully into the. Um, the foam board. I just slide my hand along the roll. Then what I do, I do the same thing here. I'm just basically penetrating the uh, paper skin, the one layer, the outside layer that's facing you. You don't want to go through the foam board. You're basically just going through the paper only. For these cuts <coughs> only right here. Sorry about that. Now, I don't really measure this, but I will measure it just to give you an idea of the depth. I just go by line, you know, by my sight on it, but uh, I'll measure it. Um, so what I'm doing, and then I put a little cut here, just through the paper, they, this, this one layer of paper, say, and not through the, all the way to the foam board. Now, the depth that I've cut here is about... Um, about like 13 millimeters. 13 millimeters. That's the, the depth that I, the, the, the width that I have there. Be, between this cut, which is along the leading edge, and then the secondary cut, which is out from the leading edge. And then I just, basically, I just do it by how it looks. And I look and I see that I cut the same depth here. Then I put a little cut here. Okay, I run, the, I run the, the ruler that I have along the leading edge and I go from the tip of the nose and I bring it out to the edge of the foam board. And there I am cutting all the way through the foam board, all the way. I do this on a plastic table so I can just use that as my cutting board. I don't even use a cutting board. I take that triangle, I just put it over there. You might need it for spare stuff later. Then if you notice, I didn't cut through the foam board, I just cut the paper. So then I get a hold of the paper and I just peel that strip away. Same over here, I get a hold of this paper here and I peel that strip away. The reason why I'm doing that is when I bend this over, this foam board will bend and it won't like 
um, crease or anything. It'll bend nicely. If you have the paper that's still laminating on this side, it won't bend evenly. Then what I do is I take my ruler along this outside edge here and I start the cut from midway along this half, this, this, this um, where I removed the paper. So I start at the midpoint of that and then I go all the way to the end and I make sure I cut through that. Very important to cut all the way through because you're going to be bending this foam board and you don't want anything holding that. Same thing on the other side. I take it to the middle, which is between the two laminated sections, the, the, the two areas where I cut there. So I bring it all the way to it. And I'll just run it one more time just to make sure it's cut. Then, you can see I have a little piece here, a little triangle here that I have to remove. And the same thing on the other side. Then I'm just going to cut out the rest of the outline. You're not cutting this through here because this material is part of your wing. This is the top part of the wing. This is the bottom part. The back here though you are cutting through. We're completely removing this back section. So we're going there. And if you overcut a little bit it's no big deal because this is all going to be thrown. We're not going to actually throw it away. We're going to use it. You'll see. But um, it doesn't matter if you overcut that a little bit there. And then I'm just going right along the line, the whole way around. And then we'll go here. This ruler, by the way, I get from the sewing section at Walmart. It's great. It's like a nice metal ruler. It costs like, I don't know, four or five bucks, something like that. So that's the piece. You're going to be using this to make the spar from it. I'll show you that in just a little bit. So I got my wing cut out here. The next thing I'm going to do, so I don't forget, is cut the flaps off. See, these are the flaps. These move, okay? So. This is the body, and then this part will actually has a cut, and this, this is a seam. This is called a, a, a hinge right here. This is a tape hinge. So you can see, actually you can see it better from the bottom. So you can see this is a separate piece. I'm going to cut those two flaps off. And how I do it is, it's not really marked on, on there, but how I do it is I start right from here. And it's gonna, I line my ruler up there, and then I eyeball it, and I make sure that I have the same distance the whole way. And once I got that, then I trim that off. And it should go now in a straight line, see? And then there's the one flat. I put that to the side so I don't lose it. I put it in a special spot because you can almost think it's scrap while you're doing this project, so you don't wanna do that. Same deal here, what I'm doing is I'm setting up that it's a straight line all the way down. So I start with that, that I'm right on the edge up here. Then what I'm doing is I'm actually looking to see that I have the same distance behind my ruler. I just do it by eyeballing it. And boom, that's the other flap right there. So, now I got my wing. Take the template back, and I put the template over top. And what I do now, very carefully, make sure that this end is over the edge of your table because you don't want this to crease at all. So it should flow freely. I hold down the template firmly and what I do is I bend it over top. And there I got the one bend. Now I turn it to this side and I do the same thing. And I create my other bend. So now I have my bend in my wing. The next thing we're going to do is create the spar. I'm going to have a spar going here and a spar going there. I want to get a center line on my model 
so that way I know how I'm putting my spars in. I basically do eyeball those in. Uh, I don't really have on my plans how you put them in, but it's pretty basic. I don't think it's very hard to figure out. Like here I'm, fig I'm seeing that I'm four centimeters wide, so at two centimeters I put a dot. Then I go from the nose of the plane down to that dot, and that's the that shows me the two halves of the wing. So now I know how to do the spar. Then what I do is I take this piece, which came from here. And what I do is I put this perpendicular down the middle, and I do a cut. Cut that so it like so. Then I take. I'll tell you how wide this is. It's I, I basically do it at uh, two centimeters. Twenty millimeters is the height right there. So that's this is the the piece that came from here. I put a cut there down the middle, and at twenty, I I'm, I go twenty millimeters to there. Then on the ends. This right here is eight millimeters. So 20 millimeters here, tapering to eight millimeters right there. And I'm gonna put the same eight millimeter mark on that. So now I have three dots. Eight millimeters, 20 millimeters, eight millimeters, with a split right down the center. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut those two spars out. And these are going to be for the wing. So, cutting this side, and the spars can or can go to either side. They're identical. When you're done, they should look identical if you do it right. So, if you were to line these up against each other, you'll see that they would stand identical. Same. Now they look the same. They're the same height, same everything. One's gonna go here, and one's gonna go here on the wing. Just to show you how that looks. So, I got a hot glue gun that's gonna be an essential tool for you. How you wanna do this is, see how, see how this goes down and then it tapers down? This would be the top, and the bottom is the, is, is is this side. So the top is here. See how it tapers down and then comes to a point. So this is the bottom. And what I do is I hot glue the bottom. And then I put it, and I'll measure this so you guys get a feel. I don't ever measure it. I just put it in. I eyeball it and then put it in. But I'll measure it so you get an idea. Up here at the top, I am about um, 33 millimeters from the leading edge and uh, 33 millimeters from the center line. 33 down, 33 over. And then I taper into 20 millimeters from the leading edge. Okay, so that's how it should, approximately how it should sit. Now, what I, I just eyeball it. The big thing is, what I'm looking at is when you slide the battery into the plane, you have to have enough gap that the battery is going to fit in, the, in between the two spars. This is actually the battery center. So you see how I have enough space in there? That's really what I'm looking at. And then I'm going to glue the bottom of the other spar. And make sure that you face them both the same way. There's a top and a bottom. So if you look at the tip, see how it tapers down? Therefore, you know this is the bottom, and then this is the top. And then what I'm doing is I just look at the two and get a feel for that the distances are approximately the same. And you can actually move your work around, like the spar, you can move it a little bit. The glue does not dry that fast, that hot glue. So if it's not quite where you want it, and you gotta make sure that they're both standing vertical, 
on the wing, that they don't tilt one way or the other. You want to have them perpendicular. Now you've got the two spars glued in. The next thing I do is put hot glue on the top of one of the spars. I don't do both, you do one of it, one side at a time. And when I do that, then I fold the wing over, like so. While that is drying on the spar, I can trim the wing. And I run an X-Acto blade along the back edge of this wing. Be careful not to cut your wing. You're running the X-Acto blade along, or if you have a packing type, uh, a box cutter, you're running that along the edge. So that way, the, that, that top layer you just folded over is now the shape of the wing also. You have excess also here. So we're gonna take that and run the, the blade along that bottom edge. And now the top edge is the same. You get a little bit of a, of a, a, a piece that pops up there and I just trim that off. And now you can see you've got a wing that has the shape of a wing. See, because you have this, this, this spar on this side underneath giving it the shape. You'll see that if I were to divide this wing, I'd have extra here. So what I do is I look at the dot that's below, the center line dot, and I put that dot on the top. Okay. When I look at that dot on the top, and then I compare it to this line that is still visible, then I take my X-Acto blade and carefully, without cutting through fully, I do a couple of slices. Then I lift it up so I'm not cutting the bottom wing. And then I cut it the rest of the way through. Very important, if you cut this bottom uh, foam board, you're gonna damage the integrity of the wing. And there you see now, I have half the wing done, okay? Um, this is extra. I have here. It's, if I closed it off, you see how, how thick that wing would be at the trailing end? I'm going to thin that out. And how I'm going to do it is I'm going to trim a wedge of material off the top edge of that wing, the inside top edge. See here? If this makes sense, what I did is I went down and I trimmed I left the top edge like it is, but I trimmed off a wedge. So that way when I then close the wing back up now, it's much thinner. So that's what I go the whole length of this model. And just trim off a wedge the whole way. If you find that it's not working as good, take your blade and by all means get a new one. Because here's where you'll notice if your blade is just not quite sharp enough. And you get a new blade in there and then you can get yourself a nice edge. The key is you don't want to have your wing taper to a square edge. You want to have it taper to a nice clean, make a sharper edge, okay? And in this way, the edge is only as thick as one layer of foam board because we trimmed up this other layer down a bit. Oh, there is something that you could easily forget at this point, and that is I put a spar, and I just use a popsicle stick. So I put a spar in right here, and all you have to do is you take your battery, put your battery into your wing, and then you know how far back you can put your um, popsicle stick, okay? Uh, you obviously don't want to have it up here because when you slide in the battery, it's going to keep it from going into your plane. So you want to have it below that. What I do is I take the popsicle stack, I put a whole bunch of glue on it. And now you got to be careful when you handle it because there's all this hot glue on it. I'll slide it to the edge of the table even. Handle it careful. And then what I do is I put Put it so half the popsicle stick is on the one side and then half is on the other half. Like this popsicle stick is going from here to here. Then I hold it down firmly, make sure it's gluing and setting in there. And then that will make this plane very rigid. See, 
I have a spar that comes to here and then the popsicle stick is coming to there. So this plane has excellent support throughout. Now what I do is I take the glue and I put it on the inside of the wing between the two halves right along the edge, right along the edge. I put a nice big thick bead. And then what I do is just hold that down. You can even take your ruler, I do this, and you hold the ruler down and you just really press good because you want it to be nice and tight. And you want those two um, pieces to join up and be only one thickness, one foam board thickness. Um, if you don't push down, you might get a, a fat bottom of the wing. If you have some excess glue, you could take a piece of your scrap, run it along, get off the excess glue. It's going to take it about 30 seconds to fully dry to where you can take your pressure off and it won't pop back. That's one thing I do like about um, hot glue and it's extremely durable. Um, it is heavy, but um, you're not using a whole ton of it, so it really doesn't add to the weight of the plane that much. Now you'll see the wing is joined in the back. It's tapered to a nice narrow level. I have a spar that runs from here all the way into the other half. It's divided between the two, just out of a popsicle stick. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other half of the wing. So I'm going to put a bead of hot glue along the top of the spar. Now when I fold it over, I'm taking it to the edge of the table. I don't want to, you don't want to bend and put a crease in here. Then what I do is I fold it over and I do the same thing that I did with the other wing, half of the wing. I trim off the excess material. So I just go along the, uh, the bottom part of the wing that I've already done and I just make sure that you don't cut this material and I take off, I trim off the excess and I just put that to the side, I'll use it later maybe. And then here, I trim that and then I trim that little piece off and I have the same issue where this overlaps the other half of the wing. You can see it overlaps it by a bit. So what I'm going to do, I do the same thing. Here's the dot that's underneath and then I put that dot up top so I know the width. I can see the line right there through the slit from the nose so I know how to trim this wing. And it's very important that you don't trim it too much. You want the two halves to fit tightly. If you, if you did overdo it a little bit, you could trim off some material and fit it in for a filler if you wanted to, a gap filler. It's not a waste, but it just won't look as nice in my opinion. So I'd recommend that you be real careful at that stage. Now, you can see I did a trimming and it's just really tight right there. I can't even really fit it in. So I'm going to trim off just a, a hair bit more. And then we'll see if it'll fit. It's just a little tight right in here. And you can keep going like that, just trimming off a little bit until it just fits. And there we go. Now I got it to where you got a nice snug fit between the two halves. And it's so tight that actually it's even holding the wing down. We're going to separate that. And then what we're going to do is do the same trimming job I did on the other wing. We're going to trim a wedge, make this back edge of the top part of the wing, taper it so it's like a wedge shape. And then the two sections will join each other and they'll join each other and it'll be only one foam board in width. That's the whole idea there. So I trim that. If you get something in there, 
you can just blow along the inside of the wing and the air will blow any particulate out. Okay, so that fits nicely. What I'm going to do now is run hot glue along the trailing edge of the wing and along the inside tip there. And then also, I'm going to put some glue along the seam. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold this down. With this excess in the middle, you can just take a, uh, a spare piece of foam board and remove the excess. And then I just hold that down nicely until the glue cools a bit. Once the glue cools, it'll, be hard, it'll harden and it'll set, and that wing will be rock solid. This little bit here along the edge, you'll see it doesn't have foam board over it, and it gives it a nice um, effect as it's going by. Um, it sounds sort of like a, a jet almost. It has a little bit of a, um, it develops a little bit of a whirlwind at the tip of the wings and um, a vortex, and that vortex makes a sound like this as it's going by. If you're going real fast, like 70, 80 miles an hour. And um, I think it has to do with the fact the way I have this tapered. This was actually not an attempt on my part. This 20 by 30 foam board was actually bigger than the wing would allow me to fold over. This is actually the side of the foam board. But when I saw that, I figured, well, it's going to be the same on both wing tips. So let's leave it and see how it flies. And I've noticed it does make that sound. And when I filled it in with one just to see what would be the difference, I lost that sound. So I think it's giving me a vortex and a little bit more lift which is nice. Uh, so then what I'll do, I take one of my batteries. The 1.3 and the 1.8 are the same dimensions except for length. But I use the 1.3 just because you don't need to have the hole that big. You just need to cut it out enough that you can slide the battery in. So I use this as my measuring device. If your battery is different, you just got to, let's say, whatever battery it is, you just got to use that as your marker. But you don't have to go that far into the wing. Just enough that you can get this slid in. And then what you do then is you cut that out for the battery. And what I'm doing, I'm basically just cutting out where the battery is going to slide into the plane. I take a little bit more off because I know that when I fold over my duct tape, uh, I put a little bead of line of duct tape on the front, like a glitter duct tape to make it shiny. Now, and boom, this should be fine now. Now you see I got plenty of room to put the battery in. That shows you what you need. Then what I'm going to do is take another popsicle stick and I'm going to put it up here as another spar on the top of the wing. You can, if you want, just put it a little lower than where you're going to place it. Put a line and then that way you know where to put your hot glue. I put a nice amount on there. You really want it to be secure. And here you're going to have to hold it just for a little because if you did a lot of hot glue, you want to make sure it's pressed because you'll see there's a little concavity there as uh, the wing dips down from both sides and they meet in the middle. So I pretty much hold it there until that glue cools. looking good. Now we're ready to do some coloring. And I'll show you how we do that. First thing I do is 
Um, I like to put stripes on the bottom of my wings, as in this example, and then the top I make solid. Doesn't matter the color. The, the, the flaps and the, the winglets or the wing tips, whatever you want to call them, I make a different color than the body, and that helps you differentiate. Is the plane going away from you? Is it coming at you? See how I have the front is like a it's like a glitter duct tape. So if I see that shiny stuff, I know the plane's coming at me. If I see the black and the blue, I know it's going away from me. So that's really nice to have. So the stripes are very important. You can invert this thing and fly it upside down so easy. So the thing is, if you see it flying overhead and you see the blue, you know it's upside down. If you see the yellow and the uh, red, as far as this configuration with the stripes, you know you're looking at the bottom of the plane. So very helpful for orientation. So the color of the plane is not just what you um, what people think of making it look pretty. It's also to help you see it better. So the question I would have with you is, you know, what's gonna what colors do you see best? And that's what I would look at to make them your primary colors. Um, what I do with the first piece on the bottom is I try and center the tape each, right along the tip of the, the, the nose and then right in that gap in the back. It's good to get the first piece centered properly because that's going to affect how, um, the line, the, how the rest of it goes. Now what I do then is I just trim off the excess there and then I just bend it over top. You can even have a little bit of an overlap on the top, it's not that important because as you can see with the flap here I put a piece of duct tape along here to make the hinge. It's called a live hinge. Now you can't do the whole thing in duct tape. This is not duct tape. This is a colored packing tape and the difference is colored packing tape is way lighter. If I were to do this whole thing in duct tape, it would be, gosh, the plane would be much better. So what I do is I put one strip down, then I go right along the edge and do the next strip. And it takes a little bit of skill to do it without getting wrinkles in the tape. You'll get better. Don't worry about your first ones if they don't look that great. They'll still fly great. And um, you're going to be crashing them anyways as you're learning to fly them. So it's not going to, you got plenty of practice, believe me. And no sense in beating yourself up if things don't look perfect. Within, I'd say about five of these, you'll get it down to where you're really doing it perfect. And um, after, like, I've done 20 of them now, easy. Trying to get the design right. So basically, the build technique, I've got it down cold. And the way that I do it, I, I don't waste any time. It takes me about two hours to do a plane completely. That would even include wiring, the electronic speed control, making the motor mount. If you see it's too short, just throw it away. If you can't, you don't want to do two strips, and you'll have a seam. And there you go. This uh, tape that I'm using, packing tape, you'll see it's in the parts list. I go, I just go with the eight rolls. That eight roll setup, it's like 27, 28 bucks, something like that, and then they have shipping on top of that. But that gives you enough um, tape to make, I would say, at least 50 planes. So the tape will be a minor part of your overall investment. I, I would say, uh, based on what I've seen with my costs, because you have to put hinges on the plane also, every single time you make it, because I hot glue the hinges in, the, uh, not the hinges, the, uh, the control horns, the, because I glue those in, you really can't remove them and put them on the next plan. So you got those, you got the tape, you got the foam board, and um, hot glue, and that's about it really. And uh, some, oh, oh yes, yeah, some duct tape too for your hinges. So you're into it for about two dollars a plane. And the reason why I came up with this idea for the foam wing planes made out of Dollar Tree foam board is to do a plane that would be cheap to do, easy to build, fly like hell, and um, basically if you crash it, it's no big deal. You're not sweating it. You didn't just lose 50 or $100 or even two or 300 with some planes. You only lost 
two hours, of, not even two hours of your time, because all you'll do is rip the ESC and motor and stuff off of this plane and put it on the next one. So you don't even have to wire that stuff up. Uh, so you're not even losing two hours of your time, and you're losing a couple of bucks in materials. So it's no big deal. Um, I personally have like five or six planes that I have made ready to go. So when I go off, I can fly any way I like. I don't have to worry about it. If I destroy one, oh well, I just throw it into the van, get out the next one, and uh, use those parts for another plane. I have, in the whole time I've been flying these and crashing them, as I've been perfecting it, I've only broken one servo, and I haven't broken any of the motors or any of the ESCs. So, the way this plane falls, even though it goes fast, it's not that heavy. It's a very light plane. Um, so, it doesn't hit with a whole lot of force. In other words, it has a high uh, speed energy, kinetic energy, but it's potential energy. The way, because of the weight of it, it's not that high. So, when it hits, it may crumple up your foam board a bit, but um, it really doesn't damage your parts all that much. Oh, and by the way, uh, the plane is actually very durable. Uh, I would say if you talk about normal foamies that you buy, uh, this plane is as durable or more durable than that. Which is amazing because it's just made of a dollar tree foam board. It's not a surprise me that that's the case. And uh, I was very um, surprised at how you can even patch it up. I had it where I crumpled the wing and I just said I want to see if it, how it repairs. And I literally put creases. You can see the wing was bent in and I just bent it back cut away an area, put another popsicle stick where the crease was to hold it in place and flew it and it flies pretty darn good. But the one thing that you're going to find is as you get into it, you're going to like it when they're, they're flying perfect and you're going to get pickier because uh, why not get picky? I mean it only takes you a little bit of time to make another one. So why repair one, one with a little bit more time and two more dollars and you can have yourself a brand new plane. So that was the whole idea of this. I had a whole bunch of kids coming to me saying, I want to fly. And the truthful answer is, they really couldn't afford to buy a dozen um, of the you know, store-bought foam, foamy planes and go through them learning to fly. And uh, so I didn't know what to tell them. So then I came up with this idea because I wanted to have something that they could do on their own, simple to build and then they could actually fly and if they destroy it once they buy their electronics they're only into it for a few dollars of, re of replacement work on the next one. Okay so I got the two contrasting colors for the bottom now for the top um, I choose a different color. Let's choose I have black and orange so I could be red. And by the way the packing tape guns um, you can get at Walmart uh, they're real cheap you can even use clear tape, which you can get at Walmart. So you can get this, like, the Walmart sells like the Scotch clear tape. That stuff's fine. And you could, what you could do if you wanted to, if you didn't want to spend the 30 initially on the colored tapes, is you could um, color the, the wing with marker any way you like, and then just put the clear tape over top. So you don't have to spend the money initially on this packing tape. Now, the, the bottom I did in stripes this way. The top I'm going to do is one solid color in stripes this way. And I start from the back. So it's sort of like a shingle. The top layer sits over top of the bottom one so the wind will not flip up the edge. Sort of like if you've done roofing like with shingles. Now you'll see I went beyond the edge of the plane. I'm going to put a little cut here right at the right at the seam. And then what I'm doing is I'm going beyond the edge and I'm overlapping the two tapes a little bit. So, and then I trim off the excess on the end. So the end should be clear. You should have you should be able to see the foam board there cuz you're going to hot glue the winglet and you want that to be foam board. You don't want it to be tape because the tape will peel up with the foam board. Now you can see I'm doing one layer, then I do the next, and this covers it pretty rapidly. It's amazing how quickly you can cover your plane. 
I'm bringing it all up to the middle so the excess I put over the end of the plane. And you can see here I'm making sure that I get that stick covered nicely. Get all the wrinkles out just by pushing the wrinkles out like so. Then I put a cut there, I fold one end here and the other end there, tuck it inside. Make sure I don't run that to the bottom. Then I do one more piece. So I put this to the edge of my, my table and then I run this last piece like so. Now, you'll see I have a wing where the tape goes over the edge of the wing. So what I do is I then cut away the excess. Then I make sure that that's nice and secure. And then over here on the end of the wing I run the knife right along the edge of the foam board and I cut away the excess. You'll see that looks sloppy, but don't worry. We'll get to that. So, I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Here again, there's the, there's the corner. So I cut there and I run the tape over the edge. And you see here it even overlaps a little bit. It's not a problem. You aren't even going to see that tape. It's going to be covered over by black duct tape, which will be your hinge, or any color duct tape you choose. Okay. So, oops. If you find you did something like that, you can just throw that piece away. You got to be careful how you pull the tape, that you pull it straight out. Otherwise, it will get a crease in it. And then, basically, four more pieces of, four pieces of tape, and I'm covering a whole thing. Then one more piece. I put this along the edge of the table. And you'll see I have a lot of excess tape. So I'm going to cut that away. Making sure you don't cut the wing while you're doing it. And then over here, I've got excess on the ends. So I'm going to cut that away, and now I've got it freed up. So this is a special duct tape I found. It's um, uh, it's a called a prism design, duct prism, and it's really beautiful. It gives off. It almost looks like it, in the direct sunlight. It gives off this multiple colors. It refracts the light from the sun. And so it almost looks like you have LEDs running along the light. I've had many people ask me, what set of LEDs am I running on my plane? And what I do here is I just put my thumb over it and I cut it straight. So you see how it's a nice straight cut both ends. Then I put the end of my wing over the edge of the table, like so. And I peel, this one is not like normal duct tape. It has a back to it. It has a paper back to it. It's really fancy. It, it's, it's expensive, but you're only using a little bit. I'm only using two pieces of this, this length for this, this, this wing. And what I do is I put, over here I put a little, put it down a little, and then over here I put it up higher. So there's more of it up here and less of it. It goes from more, more to little, it tapers, gives it a nice effect. And then I push it down onto the front edge of the wing. In the middle here, I cut off the excess so that it does just overlap. And then I tuck it in. Then what I do is I flip the wing over and I run my hand along the leading edge. And then I gradually turn my hand more and more and rub it more and more into the bottom panel of the wing. And now you're gonna find you got two effects going on here. One is you got it going from thick to tapering to thin on the tip. When you flip it over, you find that the middle of the wing is tapered thin 
and the bottom of the wing is tapered thick. So it gives you a nice tapered effect. You could make it even if you wanted to, but I, I saw that and it, it just struck me as cooler looking. Make sure that I apply it evenly so I don't get wrinkles. You don't want to have wrinkles in that. It gives you a real nice effect. Now, you saw the leading edge before, how it had an unfinished look. Now you can see the look between the two sides. It has a nice edge to it now. When you look at it, it's got a nice silvery edge. So that shows you how you do that. Next, we're going to do the flapperons. Okay. The flapperons, I'll give you an example. These are like the flaps. So I like to have them a different color than I have this. This is red, then I have uh, orange and black. So I like these to be a different color, so when it's flying away from me, I could see that um, it's a contrasting color. So what I chose is yellow. What I do is I put one layer over top. You see how I didn't fully cover it? I want to wrap it over the end. So what I did is I wrapped that end over, and then I trim off the excess. I didn't quite do that the way I should have, so I had to pull it back up. But see how I wrapped it over the end, then I trimmed off the excess that was covering over that one. Here I am going to do one cut, and what I'm going to do is bring that over like so. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is bring this over, like so, and then I take a piece here and just cover what I had done on the other side. I bring that over, and then, to make it easier on myself, I'm going to trim, pre-trim this. So as you can see, what I did is I set it so I can just fold that over like so. Here, I just go like that. And now you can see I covered the whole thing. It's nice and covered there. And I just put that on right there. Okay, now I've completed both of my flaps. And what I'm doing is I'm taking standard duct tape. This is black duct tape. I recommend that color. It's very... Um, universal. You can use it in a lot of applications and it looks good on any plane. It matches any color. Now I took one strip of it, one section. I'm not going to put that as my hinge, it's too wide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take about, I don't know, that wide of a strip. Okay, it's, I don't know if it's a third of it, a little bit more than a third. And what I do, oops, you got to be careful. You don't want to catch your pieces. If you do, you pull it like so. You don't pull it straight out or you'll bend your foam board piece. I put that to the side. And what I do is I run it from the crease up here, from the corner up there, all the way down to the wing tip. And I, I mount it like that it's centered. So like half of the tape is hanging over the edge of the wing. So you see right there, I make sure I, I pushed it down good. And I flip this over, and you can see I have tape that's uh, over the um, edge of the wing. See that? Then what I do is I take my flap here, and I don't put it on straight. I put it against the wing at this angle, because the reason why is the, this flap has to be able to go like this. If you put it in straight, it, it would be too tight to the wing. So what I do is I put it at the angle which I would consider the maximum throw for the down direction of the flap, which is about like so. And then I wedge it in there, push it against the, uh, the tape, and then I tape it on. And then what you'll see is by doing that, this will go down. If I just pushed it in straight, it would not bend down. So you've got to, when you put it on, to the, to, the, to the wing as you're taping it. You gotta put it on at an angle like this. Then tape it on, and then you're good. Then you'll see I have a little bit of extra over here. I'm gonna put a cut right in here, so that way I could take this extra 
right there and then put it against the wing like so. And then any extra tape I folded from the other side, see how it's now nice looking? That shows you. And then you'll see, um, here's the hinge from this side. I'm going to put another piece of tape over here. First I'm going to trim off the excess on this side. So I took care of the excess on both sides. Same deal. I would not tape this flat like so and have it flat because then it wouldn't have the bend. So what I do is I take this flap and I bend it over the edge of the table. I'm going to do the same. This is too wide. So I'm going to trim off a little bit. And you see how wide I have it now. What I'm going to do is, and here I'm not going to go all the way to here. I'm going to start this one right where the flap is. I'm going to put it a little bit in, but I'm going to bend this flap so that way when I take this to the body up here, then I'm going to bend this and I'm going to push, while the flap is bent, I'm going to push the tape into the hinge. So the top and the bottom tapes are going to touch. Then after I do that, I'm going to complete the hinge. And then this little extra I'm going to fold over. And this down here, I'm going to trim this extra off. So now you can see I've got a flap that goes both ways. See, I, I, it has full range of motion, way more than what you would ever need, but it, it flows easy too. There's nothing binding that hinge. So that's how you do one of the hinges. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to take the template for our wingtips, and we're just going to take some spare pieces of foam board that we had left over from our build, and I'm going to go along this template and just trace the outside edge on the two spare pieces of foam board. And there I got it. Two two different wing tips. I just go along with my knife. And trim it. to the lines. The key is you want to be accurate because if the wing tips are different, they're going to weight the plane differently. They're going to affect the performance a little bit. So you want to have it equal. Then I did my flaps with yellow. And that's what I typically like to do with my winglets so that I know they stand out the same way. Uh, you can do any color you want, to be honest. It, don't, it doesn't really matter. But that's what I like to do. So I take this. The big thing you want to remember is, see how I said this is foam here? You want that this is against the wing and they're both foam. So you don't want to put tape right along this edge that you're going to glue onto the wing. So this edge you want to have free of, of tape uh, right where it glues to the wing. So you'll see how I tape this. Because of that, I'm going to leave this margin here so the glue can attach firmly to the end of the wing and there's no tape that's in the way. You see how I fold that over? Normally I would fold it over onto here but I'm not going to do that because like I said I want the, the bind between the winglet and the wing to be secure. So I'm going to make sure that it's, it's foam board against foam board and hot glue in between and no tape as a barrier. What can happen is if you didn't do that the tape can peel up so it'll make your winglets loose and you don't want to have that. You want to make sure they're really snug. Those are like your rudder in a normal plane. That keeps your plane flying evenly. It's very important that they're secure. So I use one piece there, then another piece there. So 
So you see how I still have that clear? Then, one piece for the top here. And I can fold that over. What I do typically is I trim that so it goes like so. Then I just trim off the excess here. And what I do is I just fold it over like that. And that is a winglet, just like that. Then, that one goes to this wing. I would do the opposite. So this, this is the side that I would um, keep clear if, of tape if I was doing this side. So that's the only difference between the two sides. Then what I do is I take my hot glue and I put a good amount of hot glue along the foam edge there. And then I take the winglet and I place it on top. And I just hold it firmly. And what I'm doing is I'm looking that this is vertical, perpendicular to the plane itself. You want it to be perpendicular. And then just hold it firmly in place until it dries. And you can see now, you got a nice wing, a winglet on there. So that'll be like a rudder. I'm gonna do the same thing with this side. Okay, in the, um, in the parts list, you're going to see I have in there a um, the Hobby King uh, stick mount, and here it is out of the bag. Okay, what you're going to do is you get a piece of uh, plywood that you can uh, glue onto the motor mount. Now, this craft plywood actually I've got from Ace Hardware, and this big piece that you're seeing here sells for like I don't know four bucks. So you can get some really good stuff at, at um, the hardware stores too. And it's an excellent craft plywood. What you're gonna do is you just lay the, um, you lay the stick mount onto the plywood. You get a marker and basically trace out the outline that you want. And then what I do is I get out my Dremel tool, and I cut that out. Okay, so then I've got my marking of how I want to cut it. And then I cut that out just the way I have it marked on the wood. And there we go. Now, I did it a little fast. Maybe I should have done it slower. I actually burned it a little bit. As you can see, it fits right on top of the, um, the plastic motor mount. Now, you could use screws to put that in. But to be honest, I don't really find that necessary. I use the 30-minute um, epoxy. This one here is uh, made by z -poxy. It's an excellent 30-minute resin. I'm very happy with it. So basically what I do is I take a plastic cup and a popsicle stick. I'm going to leave two popsicle sticks up here because I'll be using those later for the bill of the, um, the plane itself. We use two popsicle sticks when we build. When you're using a 30 minute epoxy, what you do is you put equal amounts of um, both. You have one, I guess it's the glue, and one that, um, that uh, gets the glue going. You know, it'll just sit for, it has a long shelf life, but once you mix these two together, you have 30 minutes. And what I do is I put down an equal amount of both. And if I, when I put it there on a table too, I can compare it. Once the two glues settle, I can compare the levels and see that they're, um, they're both uh, setting equally. Like that, uh, I put an equal amount of each. Then I stir it up with the stick 
and it'll actually turn like a uh, a different color of it. It'll it's at first clear, and then it goes to like this um, opaque type color, and that's how you know once it's uh, o opaque and it's mixed evenly, the the glue will look even. You want to make sure you mix it nicely with the stick because if you don't mix it good, it's not going to dry right. Then what I'll do is I'll compare the two levels to my bottles, making sure that, uh, yeah, see they're both level, they're both even with each other, both levels, so then I know that I used equal amounts of both. Then what I do is I smear on the bottom. You only need a little bit. I only made just a little tiny bit. And I get the bottom, all the bottom edges nicely glued with the 30 minute epoxy. I make sure that I get every last little bit. You don't need to put a ton on, just a little bit. And because this stuff really holds well. Um, you could use a cyano glue, but I find that that can tend to break off and it gets brittle sometimes. Whereas when you're gluing plastic to wood, um, this 30 minute stuff, every, the, 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 you're going to find the wood will break or the plastic will before, before the actual glue does. Now all you do is you just center the glue onto the wood. Make sure you look at That's what's nice about the 30 minute epoxy versus the, uh, the cyanos is basically you can move it around now. It's tacky, but you see how it's actually holding it in place? It's a nice glue that way. Now when you got it set the way you like, I'm just going to put that off to the side and let it dry. And then here I have one that um, I did earlier. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my um, cutting bit here on my Dremel tool to a sanding bit. And then what I do to make it nice is I actually sand down the edges. It helps with the aerodynamics of the plane also. The plane's going to be flying fast and this is actually going to be having, having the wind flow over it. See, if you take a look, I have all these corners and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this to make it flush with the plastic. And I actually am putting like a beveled edge. I'm sanding it at an angle here, just so that way the wind flows over it nicely. The corners are rounding off. And then you can see here, I've got a nice motor mount where um, the wood is exactly flush with the plastic motor mount. So what you got is you got your plastic motor mount, which basically you buy this from Hobby King. It comes like this. It has the motor mount and it has these long screws, which I don't even use. And then what I do is I glue on the uh, plywood piece, which I cut out and then I glued it and then I sanded it once it's done. Now this is ready for the motor. Okay, the next step that I'm gonna do, I have right here a uh, the Turnigy uh, 2200, 28, um, 2826 uh, motor. I got the motor mount. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out of the package. This motor from Hobby King, which I have in the parts list, it comes with the, um, the collet to mount the prop to. It comes with the mounting brackets. It comes with the whole thing. So here's here's the mounting bracket that this um, this motor will mount to, and then this mounting bracket will go on to here. And then here inside this little bag, I've got um, four little screws. The little screws are to mount the motor to the motor bracket. And then it also comes with the, um, this is the adapter, which basically this goes onto the motor shaft. And then this motor shaft then uh, will be able to have a propeller because of this adapter right here, which I'll show you 
how that works later. So, first thing we're going to do is um, I have this uh, goop, this marine sealant goop. Um, you can get that at like the hardware store. I get it from East Hardware. And then you put a little bit of that down. And you could use like a lock nut. What I find this goop, what's nice about it is that uh, you can unscrew a screw very easily when it has the goop on it. Whereas you can't do that necessarily so easily if you put like a, a lock nut uh, type thing onto it. What I do is I dip the goop into the, um, the, the screw into the goop and I put it through the motor mount. Then what I do is I take the motor mount and put it to the back of the motor. And then you have to make sure because the screws will line up in one direction and not the other. Like in other words, uh, these four holes that are in the back here have to line up with your bracket. If you put it like one way, if I would have had this screw here, these four holes wouldn't have lined up. So you got to look when you put it on that you got the other three holes lined up. And then if you do, then you screw that in. I don't screw it in tight just yet. When um, I'm putting these screws into the goop, I just use a pair of pliers just to keep um, the stuff off my fingers so I don't my fingers don't get all um, uh, gooey and then it pretty much sticks to everything. So basically you're mounting the four screws into the back. Okay, now as you can see, I've got the uh, four screws mounted to the bracket that holds the motor onto the, uh, it's going to hold it onto this um, stick, this mounting motor mounting stick. Now, if you take a look at the motor mount, it's got, uh, this is going to be the bottom and this is going to be the top. The one that has the deeper part that's going to be down low. So it's going to, because this is sitting on top of the wing. So the part that's deeper, you want as the bottom. The part that's shallower, you want as the top, if that makes sense. Then what you're going to do is you're not going to mount, like in a lot of motors, you mount the wires facing down. You're not going to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to mount the motor so, sort of sideways so the wires come around and they're coming to the side because these wires are going to go over the top of your plane. The electronic speed control is going to sit right here. So you want, you could put them up top, but for aerodynamics, I think it's better if we run it around the side because we can tuck these wires in then and uh, make it nice. So I would run it around the side. And what we're going to do is first, I just lay put the motor on top of the, uh, the the stick exactly the way I want. I put it on top of the motor mounting stick. And I, I get it set the way I want. And then once I get it set the way I want, I just hold it over and just take my drill and drill a hole right on through. And then I do the same thing where I'm using the, um, the goop stuff that I used. I'm using the same goop and what I get is you have to have little screws. So they don't provide you with the little screws to mount into the wood mounting bracket. They give you these big screws with this thing. You don't need that. All you need is little teeny screws. And what you do is you, um, you can go to a hardware store and get little screws to fit. You just have to bring the motor mount and then, you know, um, your motor bracket and then see that you have a screw that fits in that hole. It only has to be as deep as this, okay? And then what you do is I put the one screw in and I find it's better to do it this way than to drill all four holes because what happens sometimes is you might be a little bit off with uh, one of them and that can make all the holes off. This way you get it exact. See I have the one mounted in there. I didn't tighten it up real tight. Like I said, the one thing that's nice about the goop is it won't fry immediately. It's rubbery and it'll keep the screws from backing out. Then what I do is I do the opposite side. And then I do the same thing. I put that into the goop. And I just get a little bit on there. You don't need a whole lot. 
the whole idea is that um, the uh, the screw will not back out. It, the vibration of the plane won't cause the screw to back out. And then basically what I'm doing is I tighten that up nicely now. And I can tighten this up nicely. I got the way I want. And then the other two, I'm just going to drill those holes and put two screws in there. Okay, now I have the motor mount. See, this is the bottom, this is the deeper part, and this is the shallower part. So the motor is going to sit like this on the wing, and then the, the wires are going to go over top of the wing like so. Now I have three wires, they've got like these, um, I don't know what you call them, connector ends to them. And if you want, you could buy connectors that will meet up with this and then the ESC, and then you could slide them in. A lot of people do that. To be honest, I don't. All I do is I clip them off and what I do next is I take my X-Acto blade and I trim the wire, the ends of the wires to expose, trim off the insulation to expose the end of the wires. So that way the next step we're going to do is um, we are going to solder the uh, motor to what's called the ESC. The ESC is the electronic speed control. In this case, going with the, um, the 2200 kilovolt, I'm going with the Turnigy. Um, this is called the plus 40 amp. Okay, I think it's about 20 bucks, so that's part of your parts list. And there's a, an end that has the three wires which match up with the three wires of the motor. Then there's the end that has two wires on the electronic speed controller and that is going to the XT60. It's a connector which um, one is positive and if you take a look at the connector itself it'll have like here is a positive then on the other side it's showing negative. So you know with these that the positive would th this would be the negative because it says negative and the positive would be the other side. So it tells you exactly how to connect it. This connector then would go to your battery. See here's your 1.8 and then it has a jack right there in the end. And then this connector, all it does is slide right over top. And this would go then to your electronic speed control. So th that allows, this connector allows your battery to power your electronic speed controller. So we're gonna wire all that up right now. Okay, we're ready for the next step. We're going to hook up, we're gonna uh, solder the electronic speed control to the motor. And I've already set this up many times, this exact combination, so I can tell you exactly how you solder it. Basically, when you put your motor onto your motor mount, that the leftmost one is red, okay? And that goes up to, on your Turnigy, if it's facing up top, if you have it facing up like this, it would be the rightmost. So your leftmost on the motor wire goes to your rightmost on your Turnigy. Just like your black wire then, which is the middle wire, goes to your left um, wire on your Turnigy. So you just face the Turnigy ESC upwards with the, the name facing up. Your right wire goes to the red, your left wire on the Turnigy goes to the black. And then the yellow is just the middle wire. So that's the way we're going to wire it up. And then you're going to find that the motor will push this prop. The air will flow this way. The way you want the air to flow is out, behind. You want the, in a normal propeller system, the motor would be up here pushing back. In this case, this motor is facing backwards, so this is a pusher prop, and it's going to push back. And that's the way we want the air to flow. Okay, so now we're ready. What I've got here is, um, I'm going to do it the way I said, which is basically this one here, the rightmost wire on the Turnigy, if it's facing if the label is facing up, the rightmost wire on this one is going to go to the red. 
on your motor. So I'm going to solder those two together. One way that I do it is I use um, duct tape. I use that a lot in all my work. And what I do, I just have here a coaster that, you know, a ceramic coaster that we broke. So you can use any surface that's um, to solder on that's um, basically heat resistant. So if you have something like that, something like a plate that you, you don't need anymore. I'm using um, liquid flux, okay? This is liquid rosin soldering. It's called liquid rosin soldering flux. And I'm using a, um, a, a, a rosin cord, uh, core type uh, solder here. So you can get these basically at Home Depot or Ace Hardware, anywhere like that. And then I just use, I'm not using anything fancy, just a st standard soldering gun. What I do is I put a little bit of the flux over top of what I'm, the solder that I'm going to be using to clean it and also over the wires that I'm going to be soldering. Then I hold the soldering iron down to the two tips that are exposed, the two wires that are exposed that I want to solder together. What I do is I'm holding the, the, the soldering iron on top of those and heating those wires. And then after those wires are nice and hot, I take the solder and put it over top of the two, two wires that are already heated up. Once I take the soldering gun off, then what I do is I, I don't touch that for a little bit. I let it sit for a couple seconds. After it sits for a couple seconds, I can then take the tape off. I can check it out and you're going to see that they're connected together really good. Again, I have on the tourniquet the rightmost wire. There's three wires. The rightmost wire to the red. The leftmost wire which is this one, the leftmost, I put to the black. And then the yellow, I just hook up to the middle wire. And that's how you want solder the Turnigy 40 amp to your motor. One point I neglected to cover, once you've got your wires all rigged up, and here you can see the proper configuration. Here's the ESC and you can see the wires coming off of it and then the colored wires and how they sit black, yellow, and red. But you see how I have solder? If they were to touch that would definitely cause a problem. So what you gotta do you can use, um, I use electric tape to be honest. A lot of people use this shrink stuff that you know you can buy and it's nice and pretty but to be honest I don't really um, see the need for it. Electric tape works just fine for, for what I'm using it for. And I just wrap electric tape. Uh, and I was told don't use, um, don't, don't, whatever you do, don't use the duct tape because um, I was told by somebody that will actually conduct electricity. So you, you don't want to use that. So you use electric tape. So what I do is I just take a small uh, piece and I put it around each of my exposed wires and I make sure that everywhere where the wire is exposed that um, I have electric tape and I'll do the last one also but you can see now how these two wires here that I've done they can't touch each other and that's the important thing so I'm going to do this last wire also as you can see now I have the, the ESC wired to the motor so we're good there, but if you see I just have two wires here and that is not going to hook up to the battery. So to do that we have this XT60 um, jack which this will hook up to the battery. They'll, the, these two will connect and now you'll have power. So what you do is you look on the XT60 and, and I look at this one I see that this side is negative. So what I'm going to do is I take, I have a, you know, a heat resistant thing here, ceramic tile, you can use a plate or whatever, uh, a ceramic plate. And um, what I did is I make sure that here I'm looking at negative, this is the negative side. And then you can also look at the other side just to make sure you're seeing it properly because these things are tiny and that's positive on that side. So because it's negative, I'm going to take the black wire from 
the electronic speed control. And I'm going to slide that into the slot onto this XT60 connector. Then what I'm going to do is put some of this uh, flux on top of both the, the wire I'm soldering with, the soldering, uh, and then also the, um, the connector and the wire I'm connecting to it. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking my soldering iron here and my soldering gun and I'm heating these up. So I'm heating the connector up and I'm heating the wire up that I'm connecting it to, getting them both nice and hot. And then I'm taking the solder then, after it's nice and hot, and I'm going to um, add the solder to the heated wire and the connector. Now I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of great videos out there on how to solder and this isn't one of them. I am not, this is not a specialty of mine by any means. I'm just showing you how to do it with this particular model because I wanted to take you through every step. But if you wanted to see some real, and also what I do is I have like here a sponge which, and I clean off the soldering iron, okay. Uh, I'm no expert, but most people would consider this job a little, you know, excessive. I use, I, I don't do it as pretty as some of these videos that I see. They, they really have a good technique, but that's how you do it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the red onto the positive side of the plug. Then once I get done soldering those two, I'm going to put electrical tape around each of the exposed metal areas so there won't be, just like here, there's no areas where the wire can touch each other, the exposed wire. And that's the important thing. If that happens, you can, these batteries here, <laughs> I want you to be aware, they're lithium polymer and they will catch fire, they can explode. They are extremely dangerous if you short them out. So don't do that, whatever you do. Okay, the next step is, I told you we'd work out the prop and show you how to put that on. This is the, um, what they call a colette or an adapter. This goes onto the shaft of the motor. So what we do is we slide that on. I took off the, the nose part of it, which is right here. And then I left, what you got is you got the metal piece here that goes over top of the, the motor shaft. You got this piece here, which you put on this way. The flat side should face your prop. Then I have here a Turnigy prop. And this prop I have listed, this is the five inch prop. Five point, five point five by four point three prop to show you. And then what we're gonna do is I take this prop here and in the package, they also give you adapters. Okay, which one you use, that depends on this right here. So what you do is you try and fit them over top. See how these are smaller? in diameter right here and then these are larger over here and you fit them over top until you get one that fits snug so it fits snug and it doesn't go back and forth you don't want it to go back and forth and then what, what you do is you just break that one off so basically I take that one off and now I have just that one plastic piece that plastic piece goes into here in the back of the prop. So that goes right into there. And now your prop has the same, oops, it doesn't want to go. Hold on one second, there we go, I squished it in there. So this prop now has the diameter of this prop adapter, okay? Then you gotta make sure you face the prop correctly. That what I was showing you when I said the 5.5 by 4.3, it has little writing here on the prop itself that writing faces forward and remember with this prop facing forward is this way okay the prop is pushing so the back of the prop is back here and the front of the prop faces the motor and that's how you put it on so the little writing that you see on the prop should face the motor then once you got the prop on you take the top of your prop adapter what they call the colette and you tighten that on good. And then you're gonna see the adapter, the top of it has two holes in it. You take a little Allen wrench, put it on through, and you tighten it up real good. 
it should be nice and snug. Otherwise, this prop can come off in flight or it can come loose. Like if it comes loose, the motor will spin and you will, the, the, the prop will not. Eventually, it'll just fall off. And the problem with that is you could be doing your maneuver and all of a sudden you lose power because you lose your prop. And that is not good. You can end up crashing your plane. You can end up losing it away when it's way away from you. And also, if the, the, with this one, with this particular model, if this prop falls off with this collet, the weight of that difference will cause your plane to go out of balance. Because this, ba this plane is balanced very precisely. So if you get, if this falls off, it can throw it out of balance too. So not only do you have a plane with no power, you have a plane that's out of balance. I guarantee it's a recipe for disaster. So make sure you tighten that up nice. Now this power system is all ready to go. And um, we'll show you how we install that next. Okay. I showed how we did the power system. Basically the ESC, the motor hooked up. I have on there the... Uh, the motor mount, it's called a stick mount. And we were talking earlier that the bottom of the stick mount is the one that goes down more. See how there's just a little bit of taper here? There's a lot there. So this is the bottom. So that the, because uh, it's going to sit on top of the wing. So you want the motor to be somewhat centered so that this is the bottom, this one's the top. Okay. What I do is I put it over the middle of the wing. And then what I'm looking at when I when I mark off how I'm going to mount this stick mount to the wing is I look at how the prop sits between the two flaps. If it was like this, well that's no good. It's got to sit in between the two flaps. It's dead center. So that's the biggest thing that I'm looking at is that the the prop clears both flaps and that it's centered between the two. And if you see here now this is pretty well that way. That if I turn this prop one way or another, and that's how I'm going to set it up. So what I do is I get it centered between the two, then I take my X-Acto blade. Once I see I got it lined up properly, and um, I run the blade along the, the, the stick mount. And there I got a marking with my blade onto the foam surface. And then I'm going to run that all the way, make it a little wider here at the base because if you look at the stick mount, it's got plastic which makes it wider. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully peel up the, um, the tape just where the motor mount was sitting over top of the wing. I'm not gonna, I gotta make sure I don't pull more tape off than that. And you see here, this tape didn't want to come up, so I just gotta pull on it from the side, and then again, peel that up. And I did a pretty good job of it right there. Then, what I look at is how the motor sits on the wing. See here? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark off on my wing with my X-Acto blade where I need to place two cuts which is see how the the propeller now is centered between my two flaps but it's not centered vertically yet we're gonna get to that so I'm gonna put a notch here and a notch there which signifies where this is gonna sit on the wing and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut into this a little bit. And if you take a look, I notched it out a bit. I'm going to notch this out a little bit more. I can see it's not quite even. I do a lot of what I do just by eyeballing it. Then, I'm going to put a wedge in here tapering it more towards the center, I'm going to cut it out more. Because if you look, this has to fit in there. And that is, it's got to fit right in the center, so we're going to notch this out nicely. And then what I'm going to do is really put a gouge right dead center. Okay, 
So that's the way it's looking right now. Then what I'll do is put this over top. And then what I'll see is just how it fits. See what I what I gotta chop up next. See if I have to chop a little bit more. And now I have my stick mount. I can see I need to go a little bit further because I gouged into the wing a little bit. I gotta go up a little bit here. I like the uh, that whatever I hot glue is in direct contact with the foam board. It's not you're not hot gluing the tape. That ain't gonna cut it if you're hot gluing the tape. I can tell you that. It won't stay over time. Okay. Now, see here, I put the stick mount back over top of what I just gouged out. Then, what I'm doing here is I'm seeing how the prop sits between the two flaps. And it's sitting dead center between them. I mean, you're talking, it's clearing the flaps by like a millimeter each and that's perfect. That's because what I did is I cut into the wing a little bit, moved the engine closer to the wing and so the prop, because you see how these taper in, is getting closer and closer to the, uh, the flaps. So now it's perfect that way. Secondly now, I look at it this way and you want to have it that um, this motor is not facing this way too much or that way too much, that it's going thrusting straight out. And here I can tell you it's doing good. What I look at is, see how down here, if I were to show you this, this, this lip this, of this square plastic stick mount is pretty much a little bit more than flush to the bottom of the plane. It's just over, overlapping the bottom of the plane by less than a millimeter. So right there is, is perfect. And then up top, I have it set up that the motor mount, the stick mount, just sits right on top of the wing. No cutting necessary. And then you'll see if you do that, that the motor is good this way. And then you just have to check it this way. And here will be an example. See how I'm touching that flap? No, no, no. you got to move it over a little bit so now you clear both flaps. So now I'm going to glue it. And the nice thing about hot glue is I can fiddle with the hot glue a little bit while it's drying. So that's the beauty of it. So I just wanted to make sure that I was good before I even started gluing. Because you don't want to hot glue it and not have everything work out for you. So the big thing with the hot glue, don't get it on your hands. It hurts like hell. Okay, That's the first thing. Next, you put a little hot glue here and here where it's going to be touching the rear edge of the wing. Then I put hot glue along the stick that's touching the wing and along the base that's touching the wing. I put a lot of hot glue there. And then I put it carefully. Here I'm saying don't get it on your hands and I almost did it. And you put it there carefully onto the wing. Let it sit for a couple seconds so you're sure that it's going to stay. And now you just check how it's sitting with the two wings. And here I can see that it's clearing the flaps just fine. I move the prop back and forth and now I'm checking the bottom to see how it's sitting that way and you can move it with hot glue you can move it in and out a little bit depending on what you think is best and I can see that basically I'm good this way and I'm good this way. So then what I do is I just hold it into place now, I'm actually, when I look at it, what I found, what I just went, is I'm actually overlapping the bottom of the wing by about a millimeter now that I press the hot glue into place. Try not to do what I just did here, which is touch the hot glue, because then you get these strands that over, overlap your wing, and sometimes if it's still hot, you might not be able to get them off, and they make your plane a little uglier, so don't do that. Now, just in a few seconds, I'm rock solid on that wing. When this, if you destroy this plane, you just rip that off and you just take your X-Acto blade and you trim off the extra hot glue that you put onto that mount and you can just mount it to the next one. You're going to see here, I'm going to take this motor mount and I'm going to put some hot glue along here, like along the edge. 
and then a little bit over here along this edge. And the reason why is you really want it to be secure. You don't want that motor to be loose on your wing. That would be a mistake. So by doing that, I'm getting a nice secure motor on my, on my wing. And there, that's how simple you mount the motor to the wing. Just like that. And you can see how the prop just clears with, I would say, a millimeter of clearance. That's beautiful. That's how you know you're centered. And then I look this way, and you see how it's, it's not facing down this way, and it's not facing this way. It's actually perpendicular to the, the wing, and that's beautiful. That's the way you want it. Okay. The next step in the build video is we go back to the template, and here's where we have the servo holes right there. What we do is we look, we put that template directly over top of the flying wing, and then what I use is from my Swiss Army knife. But you can just take a pen apart and use the the uh, the the writing part of the pen and you stick it in to the uh, servo holes and you just mark off where the servos go. So you can see I have a mark here and then a mark here showing where the servos go on the, on the wing itself. <clears throat> then what I do is I take the servos that um, I'm going to put for the plane and I put those over top of the mark. Okay, the servos that I'm using, they are called um, the HXT 900s, and they're um, excellent servos. They're uh, you're talking under five bucks. I think they're like three bucks a piece, and with shipping, you're like you know four or five dollars. Then that pack it comes with uh, various control horns. The one that you're going to want is that one right there. And then you have a little screw that uh, holds that control horn onto the servo. We'll screw that in next. And these screws you keep to the side. And those screws there you would use to, that's what I use to mount my uh, motor to the plane. You have four of them. Well, you got two servos and they come with two screws each, so those four screws can be used to mount the motor to your motor mount. So that's what I use there. So, I put those over there and I keep these here. And I do the same with the other pack. I keep these too. You never know, okay, so you're not using this now, but you never know when these pieces may come in handy. You could even use them as a um, as a control horn. If you took this part, put it through your through your flap, let's say, and then you could angle it like a control horn, and then just shave off the extra. So you can use those later. I keep all your pieces because you never know. I keep every screw from everything that I I, uh, I make. Because <laughs> later on, even if you don't have a use for it now, later on you'll find you do have a use for it. So, again, I take that little control horn, the small screw, put that there, and I put the rest to the side for use later. Then, the reason why I like the HXT 900s is um, it's a powerful servo. It easily moves these flaps, no problem at all. It um, it also doesn't break easy. It weighs very little, and if you look, it has plenty of length in the um, in the servo. You don't need an extension. A lot of servos, the, the for some reason, they give you these small little leads, and this one has a long one that can easily reach wherever you're going to put the receiver. It'll easily reach it in this plane. What I do is. I take the servo and put it over top of where I marked for the servo to go and I, I keep it the servo that it's in line with 
the um, the your winglets over here so that it's in line with aerodynamically because the wind's going to flow over top of the wing like that and you want the lowest profile so that's what I do there so I basically at this point put it over top and then I take my exacto blade and run the blade along both sides of the servo once I've done that then the next step is to cut the hole out where the servo is going to fit and it, it's better to have the hole a little smaller because if you need to expand the hole that's better than if it's too big how can you fill it in it's going to look a little sloppy so having done that I don't run the lead along the top edge there what I do is I take a wire and if you could see I just ran the end of the wire so that way this end will slide through without catching on anything through the fuselage and I run it through the hole in the servo and I run it to the opening for the battery. I run it to the end, then I take my wire for the servo. I take a small piece of duct tape, I take the servo lead there, and then I tape it to the wire. Then I push the wire and pull it on through. And once I pull the wire through, it pulls the servo lead through with it. Now I've got my servo put through right there. So now I have it so I can attach it to my receiver. That's where I want it. I can even take the piece of tape that I was bringing through and just hold it where I want it here for later use to put to the receiver. Now I've got this set up. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Okay, now I have both servos put into the uh, two servo holes in the wings, but they're not mounted yet. Before I do that, what I like to do is um, grab a receiver and a transmitter and make sure that um, the servos are actually working before I glue them into the wing. Okay, so we're ready to start. Um, what I have is a Turnkey 9XR um, transmitter and I have a very cheap Hobby King uh, receiver. This one is only a four channel receiver and it sells for like seven dollars on the Hobby King website. Ridiculously cheap. And uh, the transmitter, excellent. I use the orange um, DSM2 um, module that goes on the back of the transmitter. And what I figure I'd show you is how you bind this receiver, if it's brand new, right out of the bag, to this transmitter. So, when you get the receiver, you're going to see it comes with this, which is just like a little binding plug. And on the receiver itself, it's going to say uh, battery and bind for this one right here. See how I have the, you can see on this side, the little metal coming through the, the that faces this way, faces this way, and it goes into the first slot of three, and that's ready to be barreled then. Then what I do is um, I plug in the throttle into the next slot. So the first slot, the first slot is the bind plug, and the next slot is the power. Once I put it on power, the next thing I do is I um, plug in a battery, the battery that's appropriate for that. And you can see now that the receiver is flashing and I got beeps going, signaling that it's waiting to receive. You got your Turnigy transmitter. On the back you're going to see a button and it's going to say bind you just hold that button down at the same time once you hold the button down you turn the power of the transmitter on and what you're going to see is the receiver will bind with the transmitter now Let's check it out. You heard it go beep, beep, beep. That means it's ready. And you can see 
boom, we're ready to go. And to give you an idea how powerful this uh, motor is, what I thought would be a good illustration is here is my ceiling fan, here's my motor, and here I will and you can see that the motor is powerful enough to move the ceiling fan. So it's pretty powerful. That's how powerful that motor is. Now this motor is easily able to lift the weight of the plane double over. So like it'll accelerate in the vertical. Matter of fact, it'll go to the clouds in four seconds. And if I drop it down vertically in a dive full throttle, it'll take three seconds to come back to me, which means it's almost as fast in the vertical as it is in a straight full throttle descent, which is amazing. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is, this is the important point, before I glue these servos in, I am going to plug those into the receiver here and just make sure that they work. So you see the next two slots which is labeled aileron and elevator. So this is the way it'll work. I have, oh, I forgot to do one thing before I stop. And that is, I pull now the power on this, I turn off my transmitter. Once I pull the power, I pull the bind plug. Now I don't need that bind plug again unless I need to rebind it to the transmitter. One thing that's nice about the turning key with the module on the back is I can also reset my bind signal, my bind ID. So like if for some reason I'm having a conflict with somebody else, it would be extremely rare, like one in a million chance. But let's say they did, you could push that and then you could get a new, um, sort of like a combination is the way I look at it. And then it will allow a whole new signal, then you need the bind plug again to rebind it. Now the way I have this set is the throttle is the first one, the next two are the, um, the two servos. And if for some reason you're not getting the right combination of aileron and elevator and that, then basically you know just to reverse the two which says aileron and elevator. The throttle will always be the power to your, the throttle will always be the, the one that comes off of the ESC or electronic speed control. But the other two, you may have to switch them if you're not getting the right combination. In other words, if down is up and up is down and left is right and right is left, then you're gonna switch those two and then you might find that it'll work just fine for you. So you'll see. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replug it in, repower it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that it's bound now. It should, what you should hear is just what happened. It beeped, it went three beeps, now it's ready to go. And now what I'm checking is I put my finger on each servo. I just move them. And all I'm interested in is they are moving. If I wanted to show you visually, if I put the arm on, you can see that that arm is moving. So that's the important point. If it, if you, it wasn't moving, nothing worse than gluing it in, and then all of a sudden you find out that, oh, the servo's not working, and then you feel stupid. So that's what I was doing there. Then I unplug it turn off my transmitter and now I can glue in the two servos. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Basically what I do is I pull out the servo out of the out of its hole in the wing and then I put glue on the bottom of the servo. And the reason why I put it on the bottom is really easy to shave off. If I crash this plane I want to put it on the next one. Then the important thing is I pull on the the servo wire as I'm bringing it in. So I don't glue that servo wire into the bottom of the wing. If it gets glued on and you pull the servo out later, you could end up pulling the wire out of the servo because it's, it's sort, of, sort of the wire's glued in and then you damage the servo and then forget it. You'd have to rewire it. Most people just throw it away at that point. Um, now I, I glue it in there. I just hold it down until, give it a couple seconds so it dries. 
basically with hot glue what's nice is it just has to cool down a little bit and it's ready to go. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I have here two things. One is a wire and the other one is a servo arm. Now if you see I'm trying to put the wire into the servo arm and it doesn't fit. The wire is just a little too big for the hole. So don't hesitate if that happens. You just break out a drill and what I do is I drill the second hole in from the, from the center. So let me show you. Basically what I did, to make it obvious, is here's the center right there then the second hole in so this hole right here it's it's very close to the center you don't want that arm to move a whole lot you don't want the, by by doing that it's just going to move the the flaps just a little bit and that's where you want it to be so what i do i have the hole drilled out in the arm then i take this is a special tool that's used you can use pliers to get you the same result but if you ask me this is so nice it's well worth it they sell it on Tower Hobby's website it's a crimping tool it might be on Hobby Kings you put the wire in there like so and then you crimp it and look at that beautiful L you could get that doing the same thing with this but it would be not as pretty I can tell you that's just nice so then what I do after I did that is I put that through the control horn and this is the way it will sit on the servo just like so and you want it to hang with the wire going through the top coming out the bottom of the arm that's the way then what I do is I put this onto the servo and I run it over to here and I get an idea where I'm going to put my control horn. What I'm doing here by having this long wire is I'm making sure that it's in line with the wing tip, so it's in line with the plane. And then I know exactly where to put my control horn, so I put it like so. Then what I'm doing is I'm mounting the control horn so the front of the control horn is right along the seam where the bend is, where the flap is going to flop. And then I push down on the foam right there and get an idea of where it's sitting. And then I cut with this one. It has a sort of like a knife edge that's going through the wing. Some of them have like two prongs. So then when you push down, if it's two prongs, you might drill two holes. This one I cut a slot. And then what I do is I push that control horn on through and there you go. Now I have an idea of approximate length that I need to make this um, this wire. But before I do that, I want to show you something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to make a V in the wire. And the reason why I made the V, which you can see right there, is then I can either ex decrease the width, uh, the length of the horn, of the wire, or increase it just by bending it in and out. It gives me some expandability or compressibility. So if I don't get it exact right here, it's not a problem. I can adjust the length of it slightly. Then what I do is I look at how long it has to be and I take my tool, if I'm using my pliers, I just take my pliers and come over to here and then I put another bend into it. So now what I've got is I have one bend going vertical this one's going vertical, this one's going sideways. So there, if you're going to do it, one's vertical like this, the other one is like that. 
This is the one that goes into the control horn. This is the one that goes into the servo. The two bends are opposite each other. Then what I do is I trim off the extra. And there I have my control arm. Now this arm now will go through. I put it back on the control horn. And then I put it through. And I, here I put it, if you look, I put it on the second hole in from where the control arm spins to give it minor motion. And here, to give it the same minor motion, I'm going to put it on the top hole in the control horn. If I put it on the bottom hole in the control horn, it'll actually give it more motion. It's the exact opposite of what the arm does, if that makes sense. Now, if you take a look, I have a little up elevator after I put my arm back on, so I didn't get it perfect. So then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back off and I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to open up this just a little bit, make it just a little longer. The V was tighter, now I opened it a little. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the arm back on and through the control horn and I should have it properly adjusted. Now you're going to see just a very slight up elevator. Just very slight and that's the way I like it. This is actually perfect. You see if you have it straight on it tends to nose down a little bit. You need just a slight amount of up elevator. And by the way, you can adjust this if it's not exact when you're flying it. You can adjust this on your uh, remote control when you're flying. Okay? So that's another thing. Then what I'm going to do, the last thing I do is I take a small screwdriver. And I like the magnetic ones. If you take a look, it'll just hold the screw just magnetically and then I screw in the, the, uh, the servo arm so now it won't fall off in flight and that's how you mount the servo into the wing how you put the control horn oh I didn't even cover one thing if you notice I didn't attach that now we talked about this earlier you're not going to put hot glue just on tape. That's not recommended. So what you do is you put the servo down and then you cut away. Let's say if your if your if your um, servo arm, your your control arm, let's say if that if that control horn is a triangle, you would cut out a triangle. If it's in this case it's a rectangle, I'm cutting out the rectangle that's underneath the control horn. So that way, what I've got is a square that, or a rectangle that matches the control horn. Now when I put glue on the control horn itself and on here, it will it'll match, the, the glue will be on the foam board itself and not on tape. And then that way the tape won't peel up and uh, you'll have a problem where you lose control because your control horn is jiggly it'll be rock solid. So what I do is I put a little bit of glue here and I put glue here on both sides then I put it into the flap and now I just let it cool down a little bit and when this is cool this um, flap will not move at all so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it. You want to make sure, this is really important, that you get it flush, that it's flat against the, um, the flap, that it's not loose and jiggly, that it's flat against it. So the whole surface of that control horn is pressing down on the foam board and it's being glued in real good. Then if you want to, for added support, you can go, you see how it comes through on the bottom? 
so you can put a little bit of glue on the bottom where it's coming through and I could tell you that if you did that this thing would not rip out of that the, the whole flap would rip out like you'd rip out a chunk of foam before you see that control horn coming loose and that's really important because if a control horn comes loose in flight then you can lose control of the plane because the flap is not acting the way it should. It's, it's flopsy and that would be really bad. Okay, so that's how you do it. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now I put both servos in and then what I did is I rehooked up the ESC to the battery and now I'm just checking it out. See, this is proper. Up is, I'm pulling just to show you. If I pull back on the stick here, the right stick, I pull back on it, it should go up. If I push forward on it, it should go down. Right, as you can see, if I'm going right, this is correct. When I go right, this flap over here goes down, and that's going to lift this wing up. This flap over here goes up. And so, what it's going to do is, this flap is pushing this side down, this flap going like like this is going to push this side up. Now if I go the reverse, you'll see the reverse happens. This flap on this side is pushing this side up. This flap on this side is pulling this side down. And that's exactly the way it should be. That's, that's left, that's right, that's up, that's down. And you can see this controller, this transmitter, will mix it and you need to have a transmitter that does elevon mixing or delta wing is what they call it delta wing configuration and that's all there's that's a common configuration that you're going to find in most transmitters except like really cheap transmitters you can see they have delta wing as a choice and that's what i chose here if for some reason left was right and right is left and i couldn't get it to work right i can try switching the um, the two leads uh, on here to the two positions and a lot of times that'll work and basically sometimes you'd say well all I have to do is reverse one of the servos and that may work but sometimes you'll have it where up and down are correct but left and right aren't and if you reverse the servo then up and down become reversed so what I'm saying is there's times where you have to switch the position of the two leads to get the combination that I just did and then of course here's the throttle on that side and that works very well so and you can see the, the how close I did the configuration of the prop it just basically is just clearing this one on this side uh, if it's a half a millimeter I'd be surprised it looks like it's just clearing it if for some reason you did find it notched it out a little bit over there you can trim this flap and then trim this one the same so that way um, they're the identical. You want the flaps to be equal so that way when it's going up you have the equal amount of flap on each side. Otherwise it'll pull to one side or the other, the, big, the side that has the bigger amount of surface area. Um, so that's about all that I could think of with this configuration. Now we're ready to go to the, the last stage. I'm going to remove the battery because you don't want to leave the thing plugged in and you're doing work. Next thing you get chopped by the propeller. The last step that I can think of, and then you're ready to fly, actually there's two steps, is one we have to measure for the center of gravity on this um, model, and the center of gravity is 135 millimeters to 142 millimeters from the nose. So what I do is I take out a measuring tape that has millimeters. And what I do is I measure 135 to 142 from the nose. And then I put like two little dots in black, which is hard to see because this is black. Um, then what I do is I take my black duct tape, or you can choose any duct tape you like, it doesn't matter. But since I have the bottom done in black and orange, I thought it would look nice. And I pull the duct tape into a strip that has the, 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 the width of the range that I'm looking at. So 135 to 142, you got a seven millimeter range. And what I do is I make the duct tape that it's perpendicular to 
the um, black to the stripes so that see how this is perpendicular to that and then that's your center of gravity so what it is what the center of gravity is very important once you put your battery in the nose then you should have the plane balance on the line of gravity. Now it won't. It's very tail heavy now because there is no battery up front here. I also don't have my um, all of my stuff mounted into the plane. But once I do that, it should balance. And the way I configured it, it does balance. In this battery here, it can go in a little or a lot or stand out a little bit. So this gives you all the counterbalance you need. You do not need counterbalance. If for some reason it's tail heavy, like really tail heavy, you just slide the battery out a little bit. That's all you got to do. Now all I have to do is this ESC, it has to be glued on the top. What I do is I cut away the tape on the popsicle stick. Make a little square that exposes the popsicle stick. As you can see here. So now what I did is I created a little exposed, the wood is exposed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how I'm going to put the ESC on here. I take the my hot glue and I put a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue there. So a little glue on the exposed surface of the popsicle stick and on the end of the motor mount. And then I glue the ESC onto the plane and I just hold it there until it dries, until it cools down and hardens. Now we're ready to basically do the last step in this. See how these wires, they're like, basically they're, they're exposed and they're going to cause a lot of wind drag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some duct tape and that's why I like black. You see it sort of goes in line with the black here, the black on the trim here. So black goes with anything, any kind of plane configuration color you choose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wires and I'm going to tuck them in as neatly as I can against the side of the motor mount. And once I get them tucked in there nice and neat, I'm going to take some of this black duct tape and I'm going to tape it down. I even take a little strip here and run it along the side of the ESC and you can tuck it underneath into, into the nose here just to hold it all down. Now this ESC is on there solid. I don't like to put tape. You could tape this ESC down but I like to just hot glue a few spots because you want it exposed to air as much as possible. You don't, you don't want to cover it up and that will, the whole idea of the electron speed control also is that it removes the heat the hotter it gets, the worse its performance. And also, it can just overheat and then totally skits out. So you don't want that to happen. With this 40 amp ESC, I can tell you, with this configuration, it doesn't even get really more than warm ever. It's really beautiful. So what I have here is a completed model. This is the Turnigy uh, 2200 2826 motor. So it's a 2826, that's the, the dimensions, 2826. 2200 kilovolts is the speed of the motor, very fast. Then I have a Turnigy 40 amp ESC. Then I have HXT 900 servos. This is the um, configuration that is a fast configuration. And then I have a three cell battery, which is a 1.8. That's to give you duration. In other words, this battery that I'm using with the slower configuration is also a three cell. They both give off the same amount of power. But when you look at the two batteries, you'll see one battery is significantly larger than the other. This battery will allow you to stay in the air with this fast configuration for, I'd say, at least eight minutes. Okay, maybe even 10. If you fly full throttle straight out the whole time, eight minutes. If you were to use the smaller battery, you'd only be at like four, you know, half that, maybe, maybe five tops. So this gives you a nice duration. So that's why you have it. 
plus with the extra weight of that motor it makes a nice counterbalance in the nose and you don't have to add any weight which makes it nice now you see here I have the ESC wire I'm pulling it to the side what I do is I take the receiver and I tuck it into the nose of the plane along the side I push it to the side see how that's all tucked in now then this wire is going to go to this corner so what I do I put a notch right here so I basically put a notch right there and then what that is is once I put my battery in these wires will fit in that notch if that makes sense so then it gives you here's going to be the lead the battery is going to go in there these wires are going to be sitting off to the side and then when the battery slides in they won't be in the way I'm going to do one more notch and I'm going to put it right here and this notch is for the wires from the battery that are going to go into the plane so let me show you how that works Now, I hook this up, this is the way I plug it in. Then these two wires go to the side, this wire goes in like this, the plug. Then I slide the battery in, just like you're saying. The first time you do this, it's going to be tough because you haven't really created the compartment and you got to space it out a bit. Now, what I'm doing here is now I'm going to put my fingers see how I have that line the center of gravity right there CG so I'm going to put my fingers along that line and if you look here I'm not touching anything this plane balances out pretty perfectly and all I do is I have two fingers that are on the center of gravity see how it's balancing back and forth I'm moving my hand but if I don't move my hand it basically would just hang there right along the center of gravity and that's how you know you got the CG right on it then seeing that you have the CG right see these wires here this is from the battery this is your balance cable so what I'm going to do then what I typically do is I take a piece of duct tape you could have guessed that because I use duct tape for everything and you can what I like to do is I use a silver duct tape because of the silver leading edge but I don't have that here right now that's in my van so you just take a piece of duct tape I put a little bit to the side and then the rest on the battery this will keep the battery from moving in flight I don't think it will anyways because it's in there tight and then you just wrap the end of it like so now you got a nice nice airfoil so there's none of those wires are going to cut down and give you drag you got it balanced properly you're ready to fly all you got to do is throw it and that goes into that next video that I already gave you guys I showed you how it flies and the big thing with this one is you got to throw it fast full throttle don't try and baby it you throw it full throttle angle it up throw it high as high as you can get it going high and then adjust it if you baby it it's you can't go less than half throttle because if you try and fly it slow it's going to drop out of the sky it's pretty darn heavy with this configuration because you got a huge battery you got a heavy electronic speed control you got a heavy motor so this one is meant to fly fast now the one that I was talking to you about earlier it's the exact same build if you take a look I pulled off the duct tape so you can see same motor mount you're mounting the motor the same way the motor looks identical it's very little difference in the size of the motor so it's identical job the only difference is, is oops, this is the only difference between the smaller configuration is the motor is slightly smaller in depth. It's it's very barely noticeable, and then you I put a bigger prop on it because this motor spins at 1450 kilovolts. This motor spins at 2200. So this motor is a lot slower in the way it spins so I put a 6x4 prop on this one a bigger prop but other than the bigger prop and the smaller battery it's pretty much the same install 
And then what I do, the only difference would be is what I do is um, if you wanted to, you can put your, your receiver here in the middle because the battery is not going to take up that much space. With the other battery is longer, you need the full space. You can put, if you wanted to better balance your wing, you can put your receiver in the middle of this one. And this one, believe it or not, gets you 10 to 12 minutes of flight time because there's such a low draw from this motor. It's so light that it just floats around. It's the same center of gravity. As you can see, I have a little mark here. That's your same center of gravity, 135 to 142 millimeters from the leading edge. That's the tip of the nose, 135 to 142. So it's a, you have a little range there, seven millimeter range where you can balance the plane. And how you balance this one, the same as the other. If it's, if it's, if it's tail heavy, you just Pull the battery out a little bit. If it's nose heavy, you push the battery in a little bit. And that's all you have to do. Same configuration. Okay, one other step I realized I didn't cover with you guys is how do you charge the batteries for um, you know the, the ones that I recommend, which is the, uh, the uh, 1.8 or the 1. These are three cell batteries. Here, let me give you one. So you got, they're both three cell batteries. How do you charge them? Well, there's two, there's a charger that I recommended, and that was the Turnigy AccuCell 6. And this Turnigy AccuCell 6, it comes with leads to hook on to a, um, uh, I recommend a marine battery, so you don't, if you run it down, you're still good. So you can take that, plug it into your Chernigy, and you put this onto the red, onto the positive, the black onto the negative. And then you'll see right there, it'll come right up, LiPo charge. So these are the types of batteries. You can nickel hydride, NICAD, all different kinds. Eventually, if you hit type enough, you're gonna get to LiPo right there, LiPo. Hit start. Now that's a LiPo charge. What I recommend is you always do the balance charge. You can see I have it set to 2.2, 11.1 volts. Three cell. That's what these are, but these are not a 2.2, these are 1.8. So, just to show you how it's done. First thing is, you're gonna see, this is the plug that comes with the Turnigy and it fits great onto the 1.8 battery. No problem. If you're going with the smaller configuration, you're gonna need an adapter jack, which will take you from an XT plug, which this one is on, the, on your charger. So if you look at your charger, this one automatically comes with an, an XT plug and it'll take you to a JST. Plug, which this one, the smaller battery, has a JST end to it. So what you would do if you're using the smaller battery is you plug in that conversion piece, plug the battery into then the charger, and then you're going to notice on the back of the charger are different ports, and one will have four bars in it. You see that you have four holes in this? So that's the three cell charging balance port and you plug it into there. It's the middle one on the top row on my charger, although you know the way manufacturers are it could be changed. But you'll only find that that three cell will fit in one of those perfectly. And now you're ready to go. So what you've got is right here I have a Turnigy uh, 1.0 battery and here it says 2.2 so what I've got to do is I hit start once and then I go down to oops I'm going up so I go down to 1.0 so then it matches I hit start again let's say if that was a 4 cell or 5 cell I could just go down to 3 cell see? then I hit start again and then what I do is I, I hold the start and it says it's checking it, checking it, then I hit start again, and now it's doing a balance charge. 
Okay. Another way to do this, and by the way, if I had it wrong, you'll see it'll flash me a warning saying that uh, it's not correct. You see right here? Battery volume error. So that way you know you did it wrong. Okay, to go the other way, if we were doing the 1.8, I wouldn't need this JST conversion piece. So they sell this on Hobby King. It's an HTX to JST conversion. Then what you do is you plug this into here, you plug the same balance port, except this time, instead of a 1.0, I would increase that to a 1.8. Still a three cell, I hit start, hold it down, oops, I'm sorry, now I screwed up. There we go. Balance charge. Then I hit start and I hold that down. And then boom, it's ready to go. So that's the 1.8. There's two ways you can do this. Okay. I can do it this way. And I'm going to get another warning because I screwed up there. Now, I can do it this way, or they also Hobby King sells an AC adapter for this Turnigy. AC switching adapter for the Turnigy 6. It's real nice. And all you do is you would then plug this into a wall outlet. And when you plug it into a wall outlet, you get the green. It's the same exact procedure, except now I'm going from a wall outlet and I'm plugging it into the AccuCell 6 instead of with this where I'm plugging it into a battery. The advantage here is wall outlets never die, at least not in this country. And eventually you might kill this like if you've been doing a lot of charging that day, so then you can charge this up at night and then maybe charge a few more batteries up using your AC power when you're home. So that's an alternative also.